Hello everybody. Welcome again to a brand new interesting video of Channel Code Board. In this video, we will see how to dockerize a Spring Boot application. So, let's jump into the topic without any further delay. So, first we are going to create a jar file from a Spring Boot web project. Then, we will keep the jar file in a location from where the file can be accessed using a public URL. After that, we are going to create a Docker file, which will be used to create a Docker image for our application. To create Docker image for our application, we will use OpenJDK8 Docker image as base image. And finally, we will run the Docker image to test our application. All these can be done using continuous integration and delivery pipeline. But today, we will do all these steps manually in most simplistic way. In this video, our focus will only be on creating a Docker image of Spring Boot application. I will create another video to automate this process using Jenkins, an Artifactory server. I have already created one simple Spring Boot web application using Spring Boot Starter and Spring Boot Starter Web. Java 1.8 is being used for building the application. This is the entry point class for my application. I have also created a simple controller named test controller. The controller is annotated with rest controller annotation. And the method test will be invoked using the endpoint slash test. And we should be able to get a response as hello world from Spring Boot. I have mentioned the application server port in application properties file as 8888. Let's start the application. Application is started now. And in the browser, if we hit localhost colon 8888 slash test, we will see the response here as expected. Let's go back to IDE. Now I will create the jar file. To create the jar file, we will use Maven. So let's open a terminal and run MVN clean install. This will take few seconds and create the jar file. As you can see, the snapshot version of the jar file is created. Let's open the path in Windows Explorer. I will rename it to remove the snapshot part for our convenience. The next step is we will host this jar file in a public server. The server where we keep our newly built jar files is called Artifactory Server. JFrog is one of the most famous Artifactory servers. Today, we will not go into setting up the Artifactory server. We are going to keep the jar file in a simple Apache HTTP server. We will create Docker images in Linux environment. That is why I have created Ubuntu servers in AWS. First server is Apache Artifactory server. In this server, we are going to keep our jar file to access it using a public URL. The next one is Docker config server. In this server, we will install Docker and we will create Docker image for our Spring Boot application. During Docker image creation, we will pull the jar file from the Apache Artifactory server. Before going into the next step, let me clarify that keeping Artifactory server to manage application versions is the standard. So I am following the same. But I will also cover how to create a Docker image if you don't use any such intermediate Artifactory server. Anyway, we will log into the Apache Artifactory server now using SSH. As you can see, I have connected to the server with Bitvice SSH client. Let's open a terminal. I have already installed Apache server using command apt get install Apache 2. Now, if I run service Apache 2 status, you will be able to see Apache is active and running. If I go to the browser and try to access the public URL of the server, I will be able to see Apache server's default homepage. Correct? Now, I will upload the Spring Boot Applications jar file to the server using SFTP. We need to upload the jar file in slash var slash www slash html location to download it using Apache server. Uploading the jar file will take few seconds. Let me fast forward it. Once the upload is completed, if I try to access the server IP slash the jar file name Spring Boot Docker jar, you can see the jar file is getting downloaded which means we can access the jar file using this public URL. 
Now, we will log into the second server, named, docker config server. Let's copy the IP, and try to log in, using SSH client. Once authentication is completed, let's open a terminal. This is first time I am logging in into this server. So let's run, sudo, apt, get update. Once this is completed, we will proceed to install Docker. So, just run sudo apt get install docker.io. It will take couple of seconds to complete. Okay, Docker is installed in this Ubuntu server. Now, let's go to Docker Hub and search for OpenJDK image. You can see, this is the official image of OpenJDK. We are going to use this official OpenJDK image as base image for our Docker container. Let's go back to the terminal. We need to create a file named Docker file. So just run sudo nano Docker file. We are going to edit our Docker file using nano editor. First, we need to import OpenJDK 8. Just write from OpenJDK colon 8. In the next line, we will download the jar file from Artifactory server using curl. So, let's write, run curl, hyphen o, spring boot docker dot jar. And, then the URL. So, let's copy the IP of Artifactory server, and paste it. After that, slash, spring boot docker dot jar. This is the URL to download the jar file. Correct? And, finally we need to mention, what should execute, when we will run the docker image. So, write cmd, then inside square bracket, java, hyphen jar, and spring boot docker dot jar. This, final line indicates that, when we will start the docker container, java hyphen jar, spring boot docker dot jar, command should be executed. That is what is the command, to run a jar file. Right? Let's save the file. Our next step is, to build the docker image from, a docker file. For that, let's write, sudo docker build, hyphen t, spring boot app and then dot. In this command, spring boot app defines the docker image name. And, dot indicates the current directory. Let's run it. You can see, the image building is started. Open JDK version 8, image has been pulled automatically. Okay, now our image building is completed. Now, Let's run sudo docker images for listing the current docker images in the system. We have two images, open JDK was pulled automatically as this is our base image. And spring boot app is our spring applications docker image. Correct? Finally, we are at the point to run our docker container. So let's write sudo docker run hyphen it, then hyphen p 8888 colon 8888. After that, Docker image name, that is, Spring Boot App. Now, this hyphen P, maps the port of the Docker image, with host system. Which means, we will be able to access, 8888 port of Docker image, from host system's 8888 port. Let's run this. And, you will be able to see, Spring application is starting up. It's saying, Tomcat has started in port 8888. So, let's go to the browser. Copy the server IP. And, try to hit with port 8888 and slash test and bingo. That's our output. Our application is running from inside a Docker container. Before going into the next steps, let me request you all, please subscribe to Channel Codeboard. Your subscription, likes, and comments motivate me to create many such interesting videos for all of you. Now, we will stop this container. And we are going to start the Docker container in background. Also, we will change the port mapping. So, to run the container in background, Replace the hyphen IT with hyphen D. We will also change the first 8888 port to 80 port. Now, host systems 80 port will be mapped to Docker containers 8888 port. Let's run this. As you can see, the container is running in background now. If you run sudo docker ps, you will be able to see the details of the running containers. Now, if you go to the browser and refresh this page, you will not get the response because, now we need to hit the 80 port, to get the response, 
from 8888 port of the container. So, let's remove the port from the URL, as 80 is default port. And, if we hit enter, that's our output. Now, to access the jar file, from the host system, instead of artifactory server, you can use hyphen V option, to map volume, with the host system. The video has already become, more than 10 minutes. So, I'm stopping here for today. If you want me, to create more elaborative video, on Docker options, and networking etc., please mention that, in the comment section. Also, if you are watching this part, I assume, you have enjoyed the video. Why don't you, just hit the like, and subscribe button?